Anyone who's ever tried to quit smoking knows how difficult it can be, even with nicotine patches, inhalers, tablets, and acupuncture. With anti-smoking campaigns all around the island and smoking banned in public buildings, most Singaporeans don't have to put up with secondhand smoke. But what happens if you live with a hardcore smoker in a four-room flat and you want him to stop? Don Tan, an engineering student at Tomasic Polytechnic, knows the problem all too well. His dad's a heavy smoker and ever since Don was a kid, he's been trying to get his father to quit. When Don's engineering supervisor told his students to apply what they'd learned at school towards a final year project, Don knew exactly what he had to invent. A simple yet original device that would convince his dad to stop smoking. A talking ashtray. To discourage smokers, I thought the psychological effect would be best. So I suggested to my teammates and supervisor that the idea of an ashtray that records and emits anti-smoking messages. Please do not smoke as Don's research brought him to the library and all across the world as he surfed the net to see if his talking ashtray was unique. It was not just the first in Singapore, but the first in the world. So Don visited his school's Hall of Excellence to get ideas from award-winning inventions by former students. And once he was inspired by their creativity, Don couldn't wait to start work on his project and on his father. I always tell my students to observe problems in their daily life and try to apply what they learn in school to solve these problems. Don's talking ashtray comprised of many different parts. But the most important was the electrical circuit inside. It seemed easy enough as Don churned out calculations, drew the circuit diagram, and shopped for voice chips, microcontrollers, and other components so familiar to electrical engineering students. But as he pieced the electronic components together, Don discovered things he hadn't read about in his textbooks. He had made some mistakes while drawing the circuit diagram, and his team had soldered some electrical components to the wrong parts of the circuit. These were extremely tiny errors, but in the precise world of electronics, every detail matters, and it took Don a while to fix these problems. Uh, normally, when we are really frustrated and we really have nowhere to go, we will just leave our project aside and joke around with each other first before continuing to, uh, with the troubleshooting. Apart from mental workouts in the lab, Don is always bouncing ideas back and forth, even in his free time. Inspiration comes basically from the sports and my personal lifestyles and uh, things that I do at home. And my mindset is do the best I can, achieve and do not give up. Inventing helps me to venture into what I can do with my mind and with my own hands. Refreshed, Don could now set his mind on the next stage of the project programming the circuit to behave the way he wanted it to. He keyed a special programming code into the microchip using a computer and tweaked the code until it was ready to be used in his talking ashtray. So this is the very basic part and the, the birth of the project. Now that it had a brain, Don's invention needed a body. Since ashtrays come in all shapes and sizes, he decided to build an acrylic casing that would hold most regular ashtrays. After countless days and nights, Don finally emerged with the world's first talking ashtray. This is how it works. Don first records a message into the ashtray. When it's plugged into the mains, its sensors detect the smoker's hand over it and immediately trigger the recorded message. Oh, that's a good idea. Whether it's a nuisance or it has a psychological effect, the message is clear that a son wants his father to have a better and healthier lifestyle. He showed me that he care. I think that is a great effort on his part. So I will show an effort to stop smoking. All good. Don already has future plans to make it battery operated and even pre-programming the voice recording in various languages.
better if you bought a nicotine patch. You know, you, it's closer to you uh, rather than listening to someone like, let's say, for example, if my girlfriend bought this for me, right? And then she, she, she said something like, oh, darling, please stop smoking. I'll definitely laugh. La. That's the first thing that will happen to me. I'll laugh. La. Of course, it's a good device, provided it's uh, you know, um, affordable, that everyone can afford. Not long after he came up with the ashtray, Don was once again devising another invention for his family. This time, one inspired by his siblings. He realized why so many Singaporean kids had to wear glasses from a young age. Most of them sit too close to the TV when watching it. His stroke of genius? A child TV distance alarm inspired by the mechanics of his talking ashtray. My uncle is, is a high percentage in Singapore and uh, I'm one of the teams and I did not want my sisters and my younger brothers to be like me wearing spectacles. When he was a kid, he always liked to watch TV and stay close, very close to the TV and I always scolded him for that. This child distance alarm has a self-recording voice system which actually allows the owner to record their own personal voice. Go back to your seat. The child TV distance alarm is a black box that links the TV set to its main power supply. Like the talking ashtray, its motion sensors detect movement in front of it. Once you sit too close to the TV, the device repeats the pre-recorded warning several times. If the sensors still detect your presence after five seconds, it cuts the power off. I don't have to shout at them anymore. They just don't go near to the TV because the minute they get excited, uh, when they go near to the TV, the TV is shut off automatically. So they have to wait for the TV to start all over again. So they rather stay as distant away. With these family-inspired inventions, Don claimed two prizes at the Tankaki Young Inventors Awards, an annual competition highlighting Singapore's budding creators. After receiving the letter, I phoned up every friends of mine and uh, both of my project mates, telling them about um, the situation at that moment. Very happy. There's a certain degree of stubbornness in him, basically. And uh, on the, my opinion, I think sometimes it's a good sign uh, because he stick to the job and uh, keep moving. And even though his creations remain in his school's hall of excellence for now, this bright spark foresees that one day his inventions will impact more than just his family. I believe that this invention that I invent will help Singaporeans in the future. So uh, that's, that give me a goal to invent this project.